Now it's time for Lefties Losing It. And I have for you here a uniquely annoying lefty losing it about a family having a private conversation about folks confused about their gender. Hi, Harriet. Have you ever been paid to be hate crimed? Well, I have, so let me tell you about it. Okay, so yesterday I was at work serving this family that was sitting there like the three wise men. And then all of a sudden, out of the mom's mouth, I hear the trigger words, non-binary and gender fluid. Oh, and court is in session and my ears are turned on. Let's do this. So basically, the mom was trying to explain to the dad what it meant to be non-binary or gender fluid. After a few minutes go by, the dad responds in the same way that every guy that looks like him would and says, you know, I understand where they're coming from, but if you are biologically a male or a female, that's what you are. And then I'm standing there on display. Oh, just exhausting, draining, draining. Now let's hear from a Democrat Congresswoman, uh, Maxine Waters, who claims Republicans and those upset with the number of immigrants from Haiti being deposited into their small towns, well, they're just racist. There could be no other explanation. Well, let me just say this, that Haitians have been the victims of, uh, you know, not only our country, but Canada and France uh, for years, historically. They're black, they're poor, it's the poorest country in the hemisphere, uh, they have been exploited, and it continues all the time. Yes, I think they're treated differently because they're black, uh, because they're Haitians. But here is a local in Springfield, Ohio, who doesn't really see it that way, and he doesn't exactly fit Maxine Waters' white supremacist race-baiting talk. Let's hear from him. I think it's, like, kind of odd that, like, a guy like me has to come out from doing what I do on a daily basis to have fun because I see what's going on in these streets, and I see you guys just sitting up there in them comfy chairs and suits, and, like, and I'm getting out here every day, and I'm broadcasting this, and you guys are just sitting up there in suits or something. Like, I, I really challenge you guys to get out here and do something. These Haitians are running into trash cans. They're running into buildings. They're running into... They flipping cars in the middle of the street. And I don't know how, like, y'all can be comfortable with this. Like, I don't know, like, who's getting paid from this. I feel like... I honestly feel like someone's getting paid from it in the background. They dropping... They, you got... A bunch of people on a bus getting dropped off at a gas station to come down here. I know a single mom that FaceTime me tonight, FaceTime me this morning at the welfare office that really need, like, that really need something. And it's nothing but immigrants over there. And here is Kamala Harris taking credit for giving temporary protection status to over 100,000 migrants from Haiti. That is why, also, Starting with our administration, we gave TPS, temporary protected status, to Haitian migrants, 55,000. And then more recently, we extended temporary protected status to over 100,000 Haitian migrants for that very reason, that they need support, they need protection. Now, the Mail Online is reporting that Kamala Harris is prepping for the debate by practising with a aide in an orange wig. No reports yet whether it's this guy. Ladies and gentlemen, the real president of the United States. I mean, what an unbelievable experience it is. <laughs> what a great show this could be instead. We've got an absolute idiot here running the show. That's, of course, the great Shane Gillies, whose Trump is the best in the business, and he stayed in character there for two hours for that Kill Tony episode. Look it up. Thank me later. Most of it is... Too blue for a family show like this. Now to a lefty teacher losing it. This dude with the proud trans teacher shirt teaches in Rhode Island and watch this totally sane and rational behaviour as he destroys a Trump sign. Yes, my name is Henry Gardner and I work at the Trump store on Post Road. Give me with that Guy out here threatening my life. He's got a, a piece of wood trying to hit me. He's trying to tear my signs up. And here is that same teacher claiming he is off on sick leave due to injuries caused by transphobia in the classroom. School teacher, and I'm currently out on sick leave owing to injury in performance of job related tasks in the workplace. Uh, 
caused by classroom transphobia and homophobia. Owing to my own beliefs and opposition to the school to prison pipeline, this is a complicated situation, particularly because it is directly related to my gender identity and sexuality and homophobia in the classroom. Good luck, kids. Now we've seen the Gold Star families ignored by Biden and Kamala Harris. Uh, we've seen them attacked by the ugliest segments of the media and social media too. Yes, some lefties losing it are laying the boots into Gold Star families. I am angry at the Gold Star families who invited Trump to Arlington because they decided in their adoration for Trump that it was okay to let Trump, his campaign staff, and his campaign team's videographer and photographer on top of all of the aides and security. They invited them to Arlington to traipse over other people's children's graves. Just uh, gross and unhinged. Now, we always enjoy watching Bill Maher being schooled by his own guests, and that's precisely what the editor-in-chief of National Review did, Rich Lowry. Watch this. It's it easier among... to get rid of him Look. because if he lost another election, that would be 2018, 2020, 2022, 2024. I would think... And I've certainly been the last one to say Trump's Dover now. Lots of people do. I was like, no, no, no. But I think this would be it for him. I think he'd still be, he's not like Joe Biden. He's not going to go peacefully in, out to pasture. But <laughs> Republicans will have had enough of Trump. Not of Trumpism, but of I, Trump. I, and and you'd be done with all that you chaos. Can't be, you can't be certain of that, Bill. The, the one thing that's certain, he, if he loses, Kamala Harris will be president of the United States. And I wholly oppose almost every single one of her positions. I think she's a vacuous opportunist. I totally reject the idea that in the space of 48 hours, she went from a subpar vice president, everyone recognized as such, all of a sudden to the second coming of Barack Obama. It is preposterous. And the lessons did not end there. Watch here as Larry and H.R. McMaster, school ma, Democrat John Avlon and the lefty audience. We've got one guy saying we should we should pull out of NATO, right? We should not, Donald, Putin can do whatever the hell he wants, basically giving a yellow light to China on Taiwan. I mean, the, you know, the, the autocratic alliance you warn about is, is, is in many cases rooting, rooting for Donald Trump because they think it leads to American division and decline. But the fact is, is that right now, if you're strong on national security, one party party's leader seems to be trying to weaken NATO and the other party has, has expanded it and strengthened well, well, except it. Except he's supposedly forced by Trump to do a withdrawal. It was done that badly. was totally was incompetent, done dishonorable, it was, it was a disgrace. His presidency has not recovered from it since, and our position abroad hasn't recovered from it And I think you can draw a direct line from that disastrous, humiliating withdrawal to the reinvasion of Ukraine in February of 2022. I mean, I think what's weakness is the what's what is um, you know provocative is the perception of weakness. Now let's end lefties losing it with comic Andy Haynes talking about why it's so much harder to live life as a lefty. This is actually pretty funny. I am a liberal. I don't like it. It's not fun. <laughs> We all know that. It's not fun. It's a full-time job. Conservatives, that must be so easy. You're not learning any pronouns. You're leaving your air conditioning on. You're throwing all your garbage in one hole. I'm out here. I'm like, did the compost go out? Is the compost out? How are the refugees? Are the refugees all right? What's the air quality index today? I remember last year in New York, January 15th, it was 75 degrees. And all of us New Yorkers, all of us liberal New Yorkers, we had to go outside and pretend that was bad. <laughs> we had to go out in a beautiful January day and be like, this sucks, right? <laughs> Climate change. I'm in a t-shirt. This is awful. 